Hello, welcome to this video where we are looking at Green's theorem. It's a series of videos. In our first video, we just introduced it. Second video, we did three examples. And now we want to look at some of the stranger things that could happen with it. And so first up, we're going to look at working backwards. Having a double integral that represents area and using Green's theorem to actually calculate the line integral around the boundary. So one of the consequences of Green's theorem is that when qx minus py is equal to 1, then when you execute Green's theorem, the double integral represents the area of the interior region. Now, if you're trying to find area, but you don't have a line integral for the boundary, you need to have some, func some vector field f so that you can make it so that qx minus py is equal to 1. And so, you parameterize the curve if it's closed it needs to be closed okay and you parameterize it and so you want to be able to find the area that that curve encloses you can use green's theorem um, there's three different options that you could do where qx minus py is equal to one there's many different but here's three of them um, the first one is to have p equals zero and q equals x qx minus py would be a one there second option is to have p equals negative y and q equals zero then you'd have px minus qy equals a one there but the one that's most often used is when p and q both have information and neither one of them is zero where p is negative half y and q is half x with that you'll have qx which is a half minus py who is negative a half a half minus negative half is one unfortunately it gets written in a strange way where the x dy is first and then the y dx is after but usually, you know, whatever's dx comes first. But anyway, one half, pull outside. This will be how you can calculate area using Green's theorem by evaluating the line integral. It's rare, but it can be done. Have you ever wondered what the area of an ellipse is? We're going to use Green's theorem to prove that the area of an ellipse can be found, um, and it's just based off of the, the um, the a and the b from the major and the minor axis. Normally, a, a, a standard form for an ellipse is x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. And so um, that can be parameterized. Um, I don't know. If, yeah, that can be parameterized. Uh, the way we're going to parameterize that is to have uh, x equal a cosine t and y equal a, uh, sorry, b sine t. Uh, that will traverse the the um, ellipse for you. As long as t goes from 0 to 2 pi, you'll be going in a counterclockwise manner. It's positively oriented. It is uh, closed. It is piecewise smooth. And it is simple. So as soon as your curve fits all those four qualities, then you could apply Green's theorem. We're going to apply it backwards, though, because we're going to actually calculate the line integral. Now that we have this parameterization, what we do with it is we build the vector r, we take its derivative, we're going to set it up as like a f dot dr inside the integral. But um, the formula there is going to be us choosing uh, half x for q and negative half y for p. But um, we're just going to take it literally, though, a little bit different than we did it in, um, in the previous videos. But here, uh, let's go calculate dx by taking the derivative here, kind of like in u sub. Um, dx is going to be negative a sine t dt. Um, dy is going to be b cosine t dt. And so then what we're going to do is multiply x times dy and subtract y times dx. The double minus there makes it a plus. You'll have ab cosine squared plus ab sine squared. Factor out the ab. Let's take it all the way out. And cosine squared plus sine squared is a 1. You're just integrating 1 from 0 to 2 pi. That's just 2 pi. Cancel the 2s. The area of an ellipse in standard format with the a underneath the x and the b underneath the y is just pi ab. All right. That's great. Okay. And then finally, we'll end with this example here where we have a... Um, a line integral who's on a curve who's not closed. You go from the origin 
to 2-2, two, two. you go from 2-2 two, two to 2-4, two, you go from 2-4 to 0-6. Six. six on the y-axis. Okay, not closed. So there's just the actual visual <laughs> of traversing that. Pretty cool. Not closed, though. Okay, that's a curve C. And the integrand, uh, the, the F is uh, sine X plus Y, and then there is uh, 3X plus Y. That's the P and the Q. Is it closed? No, it's not closed. You don't get back to where you started at. Is it independent of the path? Well, QX is 3, and PY is 1. Not independent of the path. But that's okay. All right, and so... What we're going to do, though, is add a path. So we get a double no. When the answer is double no, you have some options. You can parameterize for sure. Your other option, though, would be to close the path. Okay. So I'm representing the, the integral that they gave us as f dot dr. And so um, I'm going to add on f dot dr1, who's over c1. I'm going to add on a piece to this line integral. With these two together, I, have, I now have a closed curve. The union of C and C1 is a closed curve. And so now that it is closed, I can employ Green's theorem. I can find the double integral over the region that's on the inside here. Nice trapezoidal region. The value of qx minus py is a constant. And that's 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 great because then we can just find area visually or maybe with you know geometry. So then we're looking for the, the line integral that's in black there. We added this magenta line integral. We employed Green's theorem. We got this blue double integral on the other side. In order to find out what the line integral is in black, we can subtract over that thing that we added on. And everything is still balanced. What about that double integral? Well, that's just going to be um, twice the area. Because through qx minus py is a 2. You can find the trapezoid formula, or you can just break it up. We have a triangle of area 2, another triangle of area 2, and a square of area 4. So the area is double 8. The area is 16. I mean, sorry, the value of the, the, value of the double integral is 16. The area is 8. Okay, great. That takes care of that. All we need is this, um, this line integral that we add on. Who gets subtracted away? And we're done. Let's do that on the next one here. So we have f dot dr1, I call it, over c1. How do you parameterize c1? You have options. There's not just one way to parameterize it. I like to parameterize when t moves backwards like this from a higher t to a lower t. I like to make that then equal to a negative t. Uh, x is stuck on 0. You're on the y-axis, so x is stuck on 0 for that curve c1. But usually we let y be equal to t. I'm saying let's let y be equal to negative t. You start at 6, so that means t starts at negative 6. You end at 0. t was going to end at 0. All right, what do you do with these guys? You put them into a vector, 0 and negative t. Then you take this derivative, 0 and negative 1. I'm highlighting this 0 for you. I want you to see something about this. You have this line integral, okay? And, and the next step in your process of calculating this line integral is to rewrite f so that it's on c. Okay, uh, c1, sorry, on c1. You have to replace the x's with zeros and the y's with negative t's. But I want you to know that if you get a zero in your dr, you don't care what is in the um, component of f in that same spot. The i component of f doesn't matter. It's something simple. It's negative t. We don't care, though, because in the dot product, we're going to multiply those two guys together. And we're going to get zero. So we get zero for that part. We get a positive t for the other part. So t dt is what we're integrating from negative 6 to 0. 0 gives you 0, and negative 6 gives you 18. 0 minus 18 is a negative 18. That is the result of the fuchsia integral there, the line integral that goes down from 6 to 0. So then what are you going to do with that? Well, 
We're just ready to put that together with the 16. 16 minus a minus 18, 34. So if you're not closed and you're not independent of path, you can still use Green's theorem. You're going to have to add a path to close it and then subtract that back off to balance it out. All right. Thank you for watching. My name is Nakaya Rimmer, helping you through this cal multivariable calculus journey, doing vector calculus now, using Green's theorem. We're done with this series of videos now. Hopefully you can now go and attack a bunch of Green's theorem questions or any kind of line integral question. Um, please comment down below, like and subscribe. Uh, find your way to my, my webpage, calcoach.com, if you need some extra resources. Um, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.